Okay. So we finished essentially matrix arithmetic. Now we're going to be moving on to communication matrices. So communication matrices are again another way of representing a type of information. And this time it's usually a communication system um, where, which in, consists of a sender and a receiver. So essentially what happens is we have a sender and a receiver. Um, and this can be either directed or undirected communication. And I'll go through that in the next slide. So essentially what this matrix, matrix is essentially telling you is if there's a one in the matrix, that indicates that the sender can receive with the, uh, can communicate with the receiver. Whereas if there's a zero, so for example, B and C, if we look at the union of B and C, there is a zero. So that means B, who is a sender, cannot send a message to C. So it's a little bit strange sometimes because if C can send a message to B, why can't B send a message to C? But that's just how it is sometimes. Um, so here's just um, a few examples. So we have the sender and the receiver. Um, so B is the sender and C is the receiver. If we look at their union where they sort of um, come together at this point, there's a zero. So that means B, who is the sender, cannot send a message to the receiver or he can't communicate with the receiver. Whereas here, we have the sender C and the receiver B. So if we look at their union, here at one. So if there's a one, that means C can send a message to B or it can communicate with B. So if we were to look at a random one, for example, this one over here. So B who is a sender and A is a receiver and there's a one here. So that means B can send a message to A. So this is how we essentially read um, a communication matrix. Um, okay, and there'll be a few calculations involved with this as well, but the important part is knowing how to set up the communication matrix. Okay, so now we'll go through directed and undirected matrices. So essentially, directed communication matrices is when, um, so like what we were looking at just before. Um, sorry, this is a little bit messed up in the formatting. Just ignore that, so it's A, B, C, D, E. So essentially, a directed matrices is when one person can communicate with the other person, but it doesn't go both ways. And it will be usually, so we usually have network diagrams as well. So I don't think I've, um, so this is like, just treat it as sort of like an introduction to networks, a next topic. So a network diagram is just another way of representing this information in a more visual way. Whereas matrices is usually representing the communication systems in a more mathematical way. So what this diagram indicates is that B can communicate with A. So this indicated by the arrow. Um, here we can see there's the, um, the arrows are, you, um, are both directions. So therefore C can communicate with A and A can communicate with C. However, this is called a directed matrix because we have arrows. And as compared to a undirected um, network, we don't have arrows. So what this means is if there's a link between B and A, it means that B, can, B and A can communicate with each other. So it goes both ways. And this is um, usually the case in real life scenarios. For example, um, you can send a message to your friend and the friend can send a message back to you. Um, this might be something like, for example, um, uh, I don't know. I can't really think of a typical example for this one, but for example, somewhere in a, um, like a job, for example, or a certain, um, um, I don't know, for example, in a certain um, position, a person can send a message to their boss, but their boss can't send a message back to them. Or you can send a message to someone in um, a higher position to you, but they can't send a message back to you or the other way around. It just depends. Um, on what the situation is. But most of the time you'll be seeing undirected communication matrices. And the way that they work is essentially what I've just gone through in the previous slide. So if we, there's a one here, that means that the sender can communicate with the receiver. And in a communication matrix, the sender and receiver will be very clearly labeled. So it won't be ambiguous at all. 
So sender is usually on the left hand side and the receiver is usually on the top. So it'll be very clearly labeled for you. Okay, next we'll move on to two-step communication. So two-step communication is essentially looking at communication um, networks where we're where it's, it co it's conducted in two steps. So for example, if E wants to communicate with A, it might send a message to D who can send that message to A. So that's a two-step communication because it's conducted in two steps. A single step is what we were just looking at where E is communicating with D. And to find the two-step communication matrix, or a matrix that gives, um, so for example, if there's a one here, um, so for example, um, this one here. So if there's a one here in a two-step communication matrix, what that essentially tells you is that B can communicate with A in two steps. Um, so this is actually the one-step communication matrix. But if it was the two-step communication matrix, that is what it would indicate. And in these types of matrices, we can also have um, more than one number. So we can have one, we can have two, if there's two parts. Same for one-step com communication matrix. Because sometimes a person can communicate with another person via two means. For example, um, just as um, an example, for example, if we had another path over here, that would be a two for the number of ways that B can communicate with A because it can communicate via this means and via this means. And to find the two-step communication matrix, so you can work through it and work out how many two-step communications there are, but the best way is to find the communication, uh, the two-step communication matrix. So the way that you find the two-step communication matrix is by putting the um, one-step communication matrix to the power of two. So you square the initial communication matrix and you will do this on your calculator to find the two-step communication matrix. Um, okay, so, so if we were to just look at an example, so if there's a two here, what that means is, so I think this is E and this is A. So what that means is E can communicate with A Two, um, via two ways through two-step communication. So one would be maybe E to D to A, and the other one might be E to C to A. So that's why there's a two there. So that's just how you would read the two-step communication matrix. Okay. Um, and then we look at total communication. So total communication is um, not that important for communication matrices, but sometimes they will ask you to calculate that and the way that you would find it is to add the one-step communication matrix with the two-step communication matrix. And again, this is something that you would do on your CAS. So adding the one-step communication matrix with the two-step communication matrix will give you the total communication matrix. Um, and that's pretty much straightforward. There's not many uses for this, for this particular um, type of matrix. But now we'll...